No guys, this actually isn't clickbait. This is a legitimate story. Check it out. Hey there guys, it is Steven from Mecha Puma, and today we have an interesting story, you know what I'm saying? Now this might sound a little bit upsetting, but Puma with me, that was a bad pun, I, I know. This story is 100% real, and I would just like to, you know, put that out there as a warning to anybody who has the same interest as this individual that I'm talking about, just be careful, because it might escalate into something else. I would just like to mention that this individual hasn't actually, you know, engaged in sexual acts with animals, so don't like report it or anything, it hasn't actually happened. So moving past all that, you know, all I always talk about I have problems, right? Well, I do have problems. These last two months have been pretty bad for me. But, uh, this individual has some very weird stuff going on in his or her mind. They can't see that they have a problem. And it's kind of frustrating because you want to tell them they have a problem. You want them to maybe get help or maybe just sort it out themselves just to become a little more normal again. I'm not saying weird is bad or anything. I'm just saying that sometimes things escalate so much into the extremes that you know, it really becomes an issue. And I think this case, something completely innocent and actually fun can just become something traumatizing for somebody else when it escalates. Anyway, this story takes place a couple months back, it began, I believe. This individual had a kind of strong obsession with the animal, you know, fox, which in my opinion was actually kind of cool. We learned some interesting facts about foxes and you know, their obsession was honestly not that bad. They would just send some photos of foxes, some videos of foxes playing around and it was actually pretty cute. It's almost like my daily dose of like cute animals for the day, only it was only foxes. And at first I thought this was maybe some OCD shit going on here, but I didn't really say much of anything because we were both kind of enjoying it. I mean, to be honest, being sent cute animal pictures and videos every day, who doesn't want that? Unless you really hate animals or something. It was pretty cute and I didn't mind it. It got a little bit annoying after a while because I was doing homework and I just get sent random links. But for the most part, I actually kind of enjoyed it and it was fun to see all these people with their pet foxes running around freaking biting couch pillows and stuff. It was pretty funny. All in all, I think it was actually a pretty good experience. Fast forward a about 15 days, about a half month, I would say. That's a pretty good amount of time, maybe even less than that, surprisingly. The obsession became a bit different, it became a little bit more intense, I've noticed. This person would talk about it a little more often than they already did. I mean, they literally talked about it every day or every other day before, but now it was literally every day and like, almost every conversation. So it was getting up there and I was like, this is a little bit obsessive, but I'm not gonna say anything. Their choice, what they like and dislike. It wasn't bad yet. Cause I mean, it was only like an obsession with the animal foxes and I forgot what other animal this person liked. I know they liked another animal, but not as much as foxes. Foxes were like their number one. They were discussing getting a pet fox in the future, how certain states don't allow for a pet fox, that kind of thing. Honestly, it was all innocent. I thought it was pretty cool. I have never met anybody who's had an exotic pet before. So that would be very interesting, actually. I pretty much supported them throughout that. That was actually pretty cool, to be honest. I would honestly love to see somebody with a pet fox. I would like to, like, actually get to pet a fox. That would be pretty fucking interesting. Also, once again, they were learning quite a bit of facts about foxes, sharing a certain percentage with me, which was also a little annoying at times, but for the most part, I was cool with it. You want to share some information about your favorite animal with me? Go the fuck ahead. Nobody's stopping you, and I really don't mind it, and it gives me a little little bit more knowledge in case somebody ever gets on the subject about that animal. It was also kind of entertaining in a sense, because once again, videos of foxes every day, that's a thumbs up for me. <laughs> things were pretty normal, and things were going really well actually. We were talking a lot more than we had before, I guess because we had interests in common. We both liked animals. And another month passes after this, and this is when things start to escalate more. And when I'm saying more, I don't mean extreme yet. It takes a while for things to escalate to the extreme, of course, but I started thinking it might escalate to the extreme. Dream. And what do you know, I ended up being right. This person actually revealed to my friends and I that there was something called a furry, which a lot of people are familiar with. I really don't care. I mean, unless something bad's going on down there, you know, with people or animals who don't consent. Actually, animals can't consent. I don't know what I'm talking about. Maybe in the future they'll be able to. That's a disturbing thought. <laughs> Let's not think about that. I thought this obsession was actually pretty normal because I had seen a few individuals who were pretty obsessed with foxes before. So I thought as long as the obsession 
session didn't take a really, really sexual stance, then it was fine because one of my teachers in the past had actually had a pretty big fox obsession. Now, she wouldn't talk about it in every single conversation. That wasn't present with her. But what she would like was, you know, little fox mugs, like almost like merchandise with foxes. And I thought that was pretty cool. My family would get her some fox stuff, and basically it was like a guaranteed liking for her. It was great. Now, I was actually pretty familiar with this fandom. I didn't really freak out. I didn't really do anything, actually. And this person even actually shared some furry artwork with me, which I found pretty interesting, actually. Like, a lot of people hate on it because it's different, or because there's a lot of sexual, more rated M art, or rated R for some really bad stuff. But the stuff they were sending me wasn't that bad. It didn't have, like, nudity in it, or private parts or anything. It was perfectly fine. I think one of the images might have and I asked them to delete it. The excuse I used was that me mom was gonna use my computer and I mean I wasn't lying, she uses my computer pretty frequently. I didn't want her to see some weird fetishy porn on my instant message because she would probably be very, very suspicious about what I was into. And you know me, I'm not into stuff like that. Not against anybody who is, I'm just personally not into it. My mom would find it very, very disturbing and discomforting. Obviously, I wouldn't want her to see that. Fast forward again after this. I know I'm doing a lot of fast forwarding. Maybe a week or two and shit hit the fan. Shit got really real, really fast. And this is the part where I honestly started to lose it. I was basically what the fucking every single moment of this conversation. So this person added me to a call with two of their friends and one was polite enough to literally shave their pubic hairs on camera. They took a freaking razor, an electric razor behind that, so I mean at least it wasn't, you know, that kind of razor, put it down in his crotch and he shaved his pubic hairs in the fucking call. All I could hear was some zzzz. I went to check what the fuck it was, just some fucking hair falling down from his legs. I'm like, oh my fucking god, I'm out of here. The other one was okay at first. We got along really well at first. They found out my YouTube channel, made fun of it a lot. I didn't really give a fuck. A few minutes go by in the call. I don't know how long it is. I didn't have a good perception of time. So it might have been anywhere from like five minutes to half an hour. And then the other friend starts getting on the topic of furries. And at first I'm like, okay. It's a little bit odd that they're literally obsessing over this so much, but I'll just leave them to do that and join in if anything interesting pops up. And oh boy, some interesting shit popped up. Let me tell you that. But I was wasn't ready to join in on any of it. <laughs> this person's friend has this folder on their computer. I think they have multiple folders and luckily enough, I have no idea what was in all of those other folders, nor do I ever want to fucking know. Basically, they sent hundreds of images of fucking furry porn in the Skype chat. It might have been tens, but it was a lot of images. It probably was at least 50 to 100 images. It was a lot. I'm pretty sure my other friend Nitro Revolt was in the call. I think he joined right before that happened. So he basically joined right when the action started going down. Pubic hair was shaved. <laughs> Lawn was fucking both. Some disturbing shit was going on in chat. So I decided to leave the group conversation, talk to Nitro Revolt privately, because this shit was weirding me out, and then guess what? I got added back to the chat. Like any normal person would do when uh, somebody feels uncomfortable and leaves, you just, you just add them right back, you know, it's fine. Share your fetish with the world. But this wasn't it. When I was added back to the chat, the stuff that they were sending before looked pretty damn tame. There was some actual disturbing shit. Like this was 10 out of 10 in disturbance level, maybe even above that. Maybe this got an A++ in disturbance. They were sending Zootopia porn, and no, this is not the worst. And get ready for this, they were sending penises with STDs. What the actual fuck? Why would you send that in a Skype chat? I don't know how that has to relate to a conversation. Unless you're talking about boning each other. Oh man, it's just so disturbing. And it gets even worse after this. This isn't the worst it gets. My teenhood was ruined by those fucking Judy Hopps, ex Nick Wilde images. That wasn't even disturbing enough, apparently, because this story goes deeper and darker than that. This person's friends and them, they were talking about some pretty interesting uh, sexual stuff that they were going to do at a, um, furry convention. <laughs> Fuck, man. It's hard for me to even talk about this now. They were talking about, you know, taking it up the butt. They were talking about anal. Uh, Furry con. That's a little bit awkward, right? Another person I know is just sitting in the call. They were literally just laughing at all this. They were well aware of what was happening. Flashback to earlier on, these friends did send me a contact request. One of them did. I accepted it. So not only do these guys have my contact information, but they can basically send me whatever the fuck they want right now. So I told them to stop twice. They wouldn't fucking stop. So I asked the friend who was hosting the call to get them to stop. They told them to stop. 
they stopped for like 10 minutes and then it just kept going and I was added back to the call. So finally the fourth goddamn time I asked, they actually stop. Haven't heard from them since, thank fucking God. Like honestly, I'm not even religious, but thank you God. Thank you so fucking much. So not even a day passes and then I got called by them again. So it escalated even more fast this time. They sent more disturbing images and once again, I'm not even gonna get into detail this time, it's worse. So my other friend got involved in this as well because I called him about the issue. I said it was very disturbed. I think something's wrong with this group of people. Obviously something's fucking wrong. And then all of a sudden my friend just says he's into zoophilia. Like what the fuck? How does it escalate in like two months from looking at cute fox videos to wanting to fuck them? That doesn't make any sense. I've never seen that happen this fast. Now I'm a very accepting and understanding person. Don't like when people judge others. I can't even understand how people could be attracted to weird things. But actual animals. We're not talking about half human, half animal, like the anthropomorphic characters, pretty much... I don't know how that interest developed. I asked this individual how they liked it. They just said it was like normal porn, only cuter. I guess because it's with animal heads or whatever. And that was pretty much it. It just ended there. But just a warning to everybody who's in this fucking fandom. Be careful who you fucking talk to. This shit's creepy as hell.